Essentially, naturalistic theatre is all about acting authentically and truthfully within that character's given circumstances. Hi, I'm Kira from Acting with Kira. Welcome back to my channel. And this video, we're going to talk about naturalistic theatre. So naturalistic theatre is essentially theatre which is based on real life, on the real world. And the performance of this type of theatre is very realistic. You will recognise the human emotions and it is portrayed in a way that is meant to be exactly like regular human behaviour. So something like musical theatre isn't naturalistic because people don't generally break out into song to have conversations or talk about their emotions. Um, other types of theatre that aren't naturalistic is physical theatre because you don't use your body in a choreographic type of way to normally articulate yourself. So rather than representing your emotions and feelings in a heightened form whilst on the stage, naturalistic theatre is about showcasing these emotions in a realistic and authentic way. So it all kind of came about in the 20th century with Stanislavski, who I'm sure many of you have heard about. And he had a system of acting, which was based on observation and his own work within the craft as an actor on how to get to the core of a character and create work that was really believable and I'm gonna say again, truthful to the character. So there's many different ways in which he did this. I've already mentioned given circumstances. So the given circumstances are anything that the script reveals about the character's life. So their age, where they live, how many siblings they have, what they've done today. Anything, any facts you can obtain about the character is their given circumstances, what situation they are in currently and what external things have happened to put them in that situation. So this essentially helps you to step into the character's shoes and see the character's world from their point of view. In doing so, you are able to align yourself more authentically with what the character is actually feeling and therefore it becomes easier to access real emotion as your character would if they were actually in the situation that you were playing out. Naturalism, unlike other genres of theatre, asks you to fill in as many details as you can about your character's life. Essentially, you want to make them the most vivid, three-dimensional person that you can, and you want to be so clear about every detail about them, as this will help you to root yourself in them um, more easily and create a much more layered and interesting person. If you don't know so much about them, it becomes hard to live authentically in their shoes, which is basically just empathy, right? The more you understand about someone's situation, the more you empathize with them and the more you understand why they did what they did, which comes into motivations. As an actor, it's important for you to know your character's motivations, why they do what they do. What does your character want out of the scene? Knowing what your objective is and your given circumstances and really delving into the details of this character's life will help you to understand what drives them and will help you to align your own thought process with theirs while playing out the scene. He talks about objectives, which is what's happening immediately, what's your objective in the scene. And then there's also something called your super objective, which is what you want over the course of the entire play. Is there a real ultimate goal that your character is really driving towards throughout the course of the play and if so the objectives along the way probably are driving you towards that super objective at the end. Knowing what your character wants will help you to create the through line of the character and understand what compels them to do or say or act or behave in the way that they do and this will give you specificity and understanding of why you are doing the certain thing that you are at this moment. So it's all about connecting the inner and outer life and rather than presenting the emotions in a grander way, in a heightened way like other mediums do, you are trying to get as close to the real person as you can so that 
it's almost like a mirror to real life. People will just see you as another person on stage, but it won't seem so much like a performance. Naturalistic theatre has really become the foundation of most mainstream acting that we see. There's been other offshoots that have come from this, the most famous one being The Method by Lee Strasberg. This form of acting has changed over the years and there's always different methods and approaches by different people, but it is the type of acting that you see in most films today and most television series. Anything that's serious drama is usually naturalistic. Of course you get more over-the-top comedic sitcoms and such, which might be less naturalistic, but a lot of the serious films um, that are pegged for Oscars are naturalistic. So a really interesting thing to look at if you want to see the evolution of naturalistic theatre is to watch films from different decades. So if you start off earlier on, I mean, if you want to go all the way back to the start of screen acting, you can go right back to silent films and then the first talkies. But if you want to start even a little bit later on and from like the 50s and then go on and see how the style of acting changes, um, it's really, really interesting because you will see an evolution in acting. Someone who is being, um, steered a huge change in the course of screen acting in this way has been Marlon Brando. His style of acting is so naturalistic, especially for the time. And of course, Marlon Brando's career speaks for itself. He's one of the most iconic, incredible actors that has been. Watching his performances are very, very interesting because you will get this, you will see that he chooses not to even speak in an overly articulate, uh, clear way, but there's something quite uh, almost mumbly, <laughs> I guess, to say about some of his delivery because the character isn't an actor, the character is a human being. And as the actor himself, he wants to get as close to the human being as he can. He's not present, he's not portraying an actor. So have a look at that and Write down in the comments, actually, anything that you notice and note down any productions that you might have seen on stage where you really um, felt like you understood or recognised a character because they were just so real. I hope that's been really helpful for you and I will be doing another video more in depth on Stanislavski and his system. So if there's anything in particular you want to know about that, pop it into the comment section below as well as a question. And I will make sure to include that in my Stanislavski video. That was a tongue twister, Stanislavski video. And until next week, have a good time. Watch lots of films, watch lots of theatre, get involved as much as you can and goodbye. See ya. Oh, and like if you like the video and subscribe to see more videos like this one obviously, and I will see you next time. Bye.